Hello, as Rob said, I'm going to be talking about uh, several groups of Silurian and Devonian trilobites from Japan, and I'm going to discuss their potential biogeographical significance. So firstly, why is this research important? Well, paleogeography over here in the Western Hemisphere is relatively well understood, and trilobites were crucial to developing this understanding. Over here in the, on the northeastern margin of Gondwana, however, things are a bit less well understood. So we'll zoom in on this region, and we can see that the Japanese arc is um, situated here off the northeastern margin of the South China Plate in this reconstruction, but this position is by no means certain. So the first major aim of my research is to try and investigate the position of Japan uh, in a regional context. So Paleozoic rocks in Japan comprise three discrete terrains, the Saukitakami terrain in northeastern Honshu, the Hidegaien terrain in central Honshu, and the Kurosegawa terrain, which is the most extensive of the three in our crops in Kyushu, Shikoku, and southern Honshu. Um, as you can see from this figure, there are plenty of fossils in these three terrains. Um, we have a, a characteristic marine, uh, Paleozoic marine fauna, uh, and trilobites form, form a key component of these fossil assemblages. The second aim of my research is to try and examine how these three terrains relate to one another. And to do that, I'm going to look at these nine trilobite groups. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about each group. Uh, these are the number of species of each in Japan. And what's important to note is that they all have different <coughs> ecologies. And this is not only evident in their adult form, but also in their calcified larval stage. So for those of you who don't know, trilobites have a calcified larval stage known as a protaspid, and they've been interpreted as either being planktonic or benthic, and this can have an influence on, on biogeography, as we'll come on to later on. So what I want to try and investigate by using these trilobites is whether their distribution is controlled by climatic tolerances, the individual ecology of each different trilobite group, whether they are constrained by environment and lithofascies, or whether we're getting a true indication of the geography based on their distribution. And with this in mind, can any of these groups be used to determine paleogeography reliably in, in an isolated context such as Japan? So I'll go through each terrain now and show you some, some of the fossils that we find there. Um, this is Yokokoriyama Mountain in Shikoku, and here we find the most <coughs> diverse Silurian trilobite assemblage in the Fukata Formation, with over 30 species described from here. Also in the Silurian of... <coughs> Kyushu, we have one species of Enchronorid and possibly one more that I'm currently describing. Also in Kyushu, in the Devonian, we have several species of trilobites from the Nidogen formation. Um, onto the Hidagayen terrain, and here we find the most diverse Devonian trilobite assemblage in the Fukuji formation and its lateral equivalent, the Kamiyama formation. Um, There's about 13 species found here. Um, also in the Devonian, in, in the middle Devonian Rossley formation, we have one species of Calaminid, but this is being published in a very obscure Japanese journal, and that I, can't, I can't track down the material, so uh, that's unfortunate, but this could be quite important, which I'll come on to again in, in a moment. Unfortunately, in the Silurian of the Hidagayan terrain, there are not as many trilobites as in, in the Kurosegawa terrain, but there are, there are, there are quite a number of species, and, and they're, they're relatively informative. Um, so onto the Salkitakami terrain, despite significant outcrops in this area, there are very few species of trilobites that have been formally described from this terrain, particularly in the Silurian, with only uh, two species described prior to this project. Um, in the Devonian, there are, there are a few more species, um, but a number of these are, um, are where, were previously based on very limited material, so I'm, I'm trying to revise these at the moment. Um, so can any of these trilobite groups um, help us to est establish um, links between the three terrains? Well, previous research in, into Silurian and Cronorids suggested links between these two formations, but this is based on a single shared species, and um, there's the very limited material, and it was quite tectonically deformed, so I'm not too convinced by this. Um, I, um, work, some work I'm doing at the moment suggests much stronger links between these two formations. And I think there's at least one shared species, but the faunas are very similar. Um, in the Devonian, there are multiple species level links between these two formations, with at least one species from each of these groups here represented in both formations. 
Um, that calumina that I mentioned previously um, also suggests links with this formation and the other two. So I'm dying to get my hands on this material because it could be very, very important. Um, and it could be very important because previous comparisons between these two terrains um, have concluded that they have a separate origin based on differences in, in the trilobite faunas of these two formations, when it could simply be due to differences in, in age. Um, so we'll look at the bigger picture now. And as I said before, the Japanese arc is proposed to be here off the, the northeastern margin of the South China Plate. Um, various different fossil evidence suggests links with, with other um, plates. So ostracod suggests links with South China, Australia, and some more westerly situated paleocontinents. Brachiopod suggests links with North China. Conodonts with Australia, South China, and again, some more westerly situated paleocontinents. Um, but importantly, we have a, um, a, a tropical distribution here, and um, the corals also show a, a pantropical distribution. So if we take this all together, the, there's quite a mixed signal from these, uh, these different fossil groups. But what we can say for sure is that Japan was certainly in the paleotropics at this time. So in terms of trilobites, um, scutelloid and elanid trilobites um, suggest, well, show multiple species level links with the Australian <coughs> sector of Gondwana. Encrinorids also suggest links with Australia, but also South China. So in the Silurian, there are overall links with South China and um, Australian Gondwana. In the Devonian, phacopids and proetids suggest links with the North China Plate, whereas chirorids and calaminids with the South China Plate and calaminids also with Australia, um, and lycids suggest links with Australia. So in the Devonian, there are also links that have been suggested with North China as well as South China and Australia. Um, so as you can see from these two, two maps, the, there's not a great deal of change in the configuration of the, the major plates between, from the Silurian to the Devonian. So it's quite um, improbable that Japan was linked to both South China and North China at this time. So what could be the reasons for these mixed signals? Well, it could simply be that this model is not, not very accurate. Um, and there's not a great deal of data, um, particularly paleomag data from North China. So it, it is possible that this model is, is wrong. Um, or it could, sorry, it could simply be due a limitation imposed by the, the amount of uh, specimens we have available and the, the um, imperfect nature of the, the Japanese fossil record, which is compounded by the, the tectonic setting. Uh, or it could be due to lithofascies, excuse me, It's long been known that uh, lithofascies and environmental factors can have a, a strong influence on, on biogeographical signals. Um, and this, this figure is a, a reconstruction of the, the, the setting of Paleozoic Japan. Um, so shallow water um, faunas tend to have a more limited distribution than those in, in deeper water, which tend to be more widespread. So if we have a look at the lithofascies distribution in the Japanese terrains, we can see that the vast, the vast majority are shallow marine carbonates. But these two formations here um, have mudstones that indicate a, a potentially deeper water setting. And this is where we find the proetids and phacopids that suggest links with North China. Whereas the others, uh, we find these trilobites that, that suggest links with South China and Australia. So there's a clear um, environmental control on, on the trilobite distribution in these Japanese terrains. So I'll go back to this big question of, are any of these groups um, reliable to use in this context? And in terms of climate, climate, um, as we've seen, Japan was in the paleotropics, so um, climatic influence is not so great in this, in this context. In terms of autoecology, uh, this trilobite group is found in deep water as well as shallow water, so perhaps may, may not be as useful. These three trilobite groups have the planktonic larvae that I was talking about that would be more widely distributed than benthic larvae, so they may, may not be as useful. In terms of lithofascies, these two groups are strongly constrained by the lithofascies they occur in, so we only find these in, in uh, 
white limestones in, in the Silurian. So on the balance of things, these three groups may be more useful than the others. They occur in a range of different lithofasces with broad environmental tolerances within shallow water settings, and they're benthic for their entire life cycle, so from larvae all the way up to adult. So if we have a look at the, the signal from these three groups, we can see that there's a consistent um, links with South China and Australia. So it, it, it kind of reinforces the, this model, the position of Japan off the, the margin of South China. And other lines of evidence, such as detrital zircons, also um, suggest this, this position for Japan. So in conclusion, um, trilobites suggest overall links with Australia and Gondwana in, in the, the Silurian, and also with North China in the Devonian. Um, Trilobite correlation within the, the three terrains may be complicated by age differences, but more materials needed to confirm this. Um, environmental lithofasces and ecological controls on trilobite distribution suggest that we should use trilobites with caution when investigating biogeography in an isolated context such as Japan. It's essential to investigate each separate group in terms of their individual environmental tolerances, and with this in mind, some groups may be more reliable than others and those groups suggest um, links with South China, which reinforces the, the model by Cox and Torswick. So thank you very much for listening. I'd like to thank all of these people, so various museum curators um, and other people who've helped me. Um, so anyway, I'm happy to take any questions now or in, in the coffee break.